agenda is case VA 2023-12. Matt? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a plan development amendment request by Jonathan Urban. Um, this is for property located at 510 and 512 at North Barack Obama Boulevard. You may remember this from 2021 when it went through plan development approval for the first time. Um, it's a collection of properties, um, split zone between OP and R6, and it's for a commercial daycare and a school operation. Um, the same applicant is requesting an amendment to add some more territory to that plan development. Um, we covered a lot of these details at the work session, but there's a lot of repeat to this. Um, you know, we process amendments to plan development as minor if it's a very little subtle change. When you start adding additional property to the plan development, that is automatically a major change and requires re review, re advertisement, and so forth. And that's why we are here. But you'll run through this um, in the PowerPoint. You see the zoning pattern on the screen, um, pretty much dividing um, the western area of the neighborhood is R6. You see the OP and the RP in the middle. And the RP to the south is a professional office <coughs> building. And then the M1 property to the east. Um, most of that is the vacant land that used to be a um, cracking good facility that's been vacant for a number of years. Character area, um, similar pattern, the residential zoning is reflected in the established residential character area, which is subject property as part of. Aerial imagery from a couple of years ago. You see the rooftop and the accessory buildings to the daycare itself. You see the what looks like a vacant lot or a field to the west. That is where the school facility was built as part of that plan development. This area predates the building that is now already there. Survey of the subject property, sort of a regular shape. Um, what they are adding is the track two parcel, which you see in the lower right hand corner. That's at the corner of East of Air and North Barack Obama. And then a little bit of land on the west side where the driveway goes out to East of Air. Uh, refresher, uh, those of you visited the site, subject property seen from the main entrance, Little Angels uh, Preschool and Child Care Center. This is the official name. Um, and this is sort of a tour going in through the interior of the site, coming in the north entrance. This is the pick up and drop off the area in front of the main building. As you go southward and turn toward the west, this was the new driveway that they added a couple of years ago that goes into the rear of the site. Um, fence to the left is other property and the fence retention on the playground to the right. As you get to the end of that drive and look to the left, this is the entrance drive out to East of Dare. Um, that originally was just a one lane, that's all they had room for. This used to be Mion Street, remember that was talked about a couple of years ago. That was closed and vacated by the city. The applicant immediately gained custody of half of that. They have since acquired the other half. That facilitates the two-lane or two-way traffic out on the east of there, which helps make the site work very well. You see the landscaping around the driveway, looking back toward the main daycare facility and its playground. And then sweeping a little bit to the left, this is the separate parking area that's in front of the school, right in the very center of the property. And as you come around the corner to that, this new school building that is sitting there. And then back out to east of there. This is the subject property corner that's being added. This is looking northward from the corner of Adair and North Barack Obama. Um, Adair is the one off to the left. Currently a single family residence um, that the applicants have acquired. It is in pretty bad shape. I have actually been inside the building. Um, it looks better in this picture than it truly is. I think they will attest to that. Um, they're already using it for overflow parking, and they're trying to come up with a plan to actually use this in a better way, and that's there in the site plans. Um, to the west of that is the backyard of the house, which this is the part that they're proposing to turn into additional parking. Surrounding area, this is looking northeastward. It's the old cracking good facility diagonal across the street. Um, a small church directly across the street to the east. This is looking southward back toward the Hill Avenue intersections. I think that traffic light is Cypress Street, which you see there in the distance. <coughs> and then to the right, this is the RP property that shows up on the zoning map where the professional office building uh, uses are. Interesting part from the north, it looks like a house, but it has a pretty good 
good sized parking lot on the south side, then developed its offices for a while. This is looking westward down East Bedair Street, um, subject properties there on the right. Um, in your packet, there's a lot of information from the old approval from 2021, including this site plan, um, which shows how it was to be built. Everything you see here has already been constructed as a result of that approval. The new plan is in adding on to the old. Um, you notice the difference is the school actually got put on the north end of that vacant lot property instead of the south end. So that was a minor change. Um, but you're also seeing the addition of the property at the southeast corner. The proposed building is new. It's to replace the residential building that's there now. Um, just a little bit larger, um, but would otherwise straddle the property line. They are proposing to maintain residential character uh, with that building so it sort of blends in um, with what used to be there and some of the other residential uses. Um, copy of that's in your packet as is the floor plan. Um, it's to be used as sort of a dining hall and kitchen facility to support the daycare and school operation. Uh, free up a little bit of space within the existing buildings that are there. Um, the applicants are here as are their engineer. Um, in your packet also this is of course the land use certificate from 2021. It was approved with seven conditions of approval. Staff has recommended approval also with seven conditions, but they are a little bit different. And just to walk through these one more time. Um, the first condition puts in the statement that this approval supersedes the previous approval, so there's no confusion. Um, number two has been added separately, and that is to combine all parcels into one. Um, the applicant has combined the previous existing parcels together, but not yet recognized by the tax office. So that needs to be worked out. And then when adding this new geography into the plan development, that needs to be replatted and incorporated into the plan practice as well. Um, then three and four and five are all identical to before. Um, number six, we have changed a little bit to make reference for signage regulations to OP zoning for the OP zone part of the property. It was something that probably should have been in the 20, 2021 approval that was left out, so we're putting it in here. Um, and number seven is what used to be, I think, old number six, but it's the statement about all other development regulations are applicable. Here we're clarifying that development regulations as it pertains to non-residential development. Uh, with split zoning of OP and R6, there's a little bit of confusion with the R6 residential zoning and its development standards, which are fundamentally different than OP. So what this does is get everything into one bucket for rules. Um, one thing you will notice in the previous approval, as with all other planned developments, there's an expiration date. I have omitted that here, and that is on purpose, because it is, quite frankly, unnecessary. Um, the property that is built and developed was made active with the previous plan development approval, which had its own expiration date. They did all the things that were necessary to activate that plan development, so there was no expiration. Um, so it's an active PD. All we're doing is adding property to it. There's no need to put an expiration date on by adding property. Whether they you know, accomplish this <clears throat> this year or 10 years from now, it's all one and the same. It's an active plan development. All other rules are applied. So I didn't want to clutter it up by putting another expiration date. So with that, I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have. Um, our big audience tonight includes the applicant and his engineer. Um, Do you have any questions for staff? I do. Um, Matt, can you address the, um, this with the signatures on that? Can you address that? That with the signatures. I think that's from your minutes. Back. Okay, so this is not part no, of that. Because that totally confused me. Yeah. Okay. If you did it once, I didn't sign that. Thank you. 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 And I also went at the work session. I apologize. So I'm, I know you've done the math, but with the accumulation of all these buildings, they still fall under 20,000 square feet. Yeah, thank you, Commissioner. Um, I forgot that little detail. Commission number one originally had a limit of 16,000 square feet. They are adding a proposed 
hundred and something square foot building, which will bring it up two thousand. All I did was add more another two thousand just to round it up to a bigger number. Okay. All right. And follow up, just a, two more follow ups. So I'm just curious on number three. Why 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 did you condition by outside? I mean, the buildings, of course, have vertical side. I don't know they can put vertical. Vinyl. I'm just curious. It don't matter to me. I'm just curious. Based on what's around it. So it's a block building across the street. You condition the block building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's a stucco covered building. Mm -hmm. and it's just to help it look better. Okay. And then one final question is, is the six-foot opaque fence there currently? On the perimeter? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm not convinced all of the original landscaping has survived, but yes. Okay. Uh, which means when the, the time comes and they want to add this building in the parking lot, it's a full plan review for the whole property again. It looks good. It, it does. When you, you see the pictures, the interior of the site, it's mm -hmm. an upgrade to the area. Very nice. Particularly that vacant industrial property across the street. Mm -hmm. I just mentioned for the record that the change from 16 to 20 was specifically mentioned at the work session. Yes, thank you. I skipped right over that. I'm trying to be quick. Okay, any other questions for staff commissioners? Uh, man, I just wondered that I think it's the preschool building uh, where the pie hydrant is uh, in, the back. Mm -hmm. in the back. Is that enough room for the uh, body uh, apparatus, the trucks, to? It is. It's a loop drive. Fire department approved that plan. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's. Maybe from a day or it's just outside the 500 foot hose length, but they approved it. That's how it got built that way. All right. No other questions for staff? No. Right. Then we will now enter the public hearing portion of this case. Is there anyone here this evening that would like to speak in favor of this application? If so, please come forward and state your name for the record and address. My name is Bill Kent. I'm the project engineer, Innovate Engineering, 2214 North Patterson. Uh, the owners are here if, if needed, but I'm really here to answer any questions about the, the new building and the little bit of parking they're adding. I think staff did a great job of, of explaining what's going on. So, any questions? Any questions for Mr. Kent? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else here this evening who would like to speak in favor of this application? If so, please come forward, state your name and address to the record. Mm -hmm. My name is Jonathan Irvin, 43. I'm a cop at Rolls Royce Officer Georgia. I'm just here to answer any questions y'all got pertaining to the detail of the building. Any questions for Mr. Irvin? Let's do it. Looks like Rose's problem. <laughs> Is that off of, uh, sure. off of my experience in the cobble? Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know. We talked about the <laughs> <laughs> oh, Can I ask a question? Just pure curiosity. What's your, I don't know what you call it in that industry, your census, or uh, uh, how many children do y'all currently serve? We're going to try to ask about it. Sorry? Well, bless y'all. <laughs> Any other questions for Mr. Irvin? I just made his address. Well, 4831, Macaulay Road. 4831. Thank you. Speak, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Irvin. Thank you. Is there anyone here this evening who would like to speak against this application? If so, please come forward. Is there anyone here tonight who would like to speak against this application? Seeing no one, that will close the public hearing portion of this case. I will now go back to the commissioners for any questions they may have among themselves. Commissioners, any questions for further discussion? Then I will entertain a motion on this application. Madam case DA 2023-12. Uh, where they want to amend the previous plan of development to make a motion that we approve the new one set the force this evening. So we have to look the seven. Oh, I'm sorry, and that includes all the seven uh, conditions that stated. So all right, we have a we have a motion for approval by Commissioner Bailey, including the seven rec staff recommendations. Um, is there a second? We do. Second. 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 And I have a second motion from Commissioner Bailey. What was that, Bob? 
motion to recommend approval. I think I said that. Didn't I, say that? I thought you said next. I thought you said motion to approve. Yeah, whatever. Thank whatever you. Is, <laughs> we'll fix it. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor of approval? Well, I believe that's unanimous. Yeah. 